Ezekiel 32, 1 through 16, devotional focus verse. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven, and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. Ezekiel 32, 7 through 8. On August 21st, 2017, a total solar eclipse, dubbed the Great American Eclipse by the media, was visible in the United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic coasts. Since this was the first time since June 8th, 1918, that a solar eclipse had been observable across the whole nation, the event generated a great deal of excitement. Old and young alike gathered to watch outside of homes and businesses, on rooftops and mountaintops, on sandy beaches and in open fields. Parties and celebrations were set up in the eclipse path, and hotels near good viewing locations were booked months in advance. Many people left their homes and traveled hundreds of miles just to get a glimpse of the phenomenon that takes place when the moon passes between the sun and the earth. According to news reports, a number of marriage proposals were made during the event, and at least one wedding took place in tandem with the darkening sky. Our family joined in the nationwide anticipation. On the morning of August 21st, three generations of us gathered on the sidewalk in front of our daughter's home, arranged our folding chairs to face the sun, and laid out an array of snacks. After donning eclipse glasses that we had been assured would protect our eyes, we watched and waited. Shortly after 9 a.m., a thin line of shadow began to darken the edge of the sun. As the shadow slowly expanded across the sun's surface, the houses and yards in the neighborhood, brightly illuminated just moments before, gradually descended into dusk-like dimness. What an unusual experience! It was definitely a day to remember. In our key verses, the prophet Ezekiel described a time of darkness coming upon Egypt that would also be a day to remember. That darkness, however, would not only cover the sun, but also the moon and all the bright lights of heaven. It would not be a time of excited celebration, but of judgment. These verses were part of an oracle lamenting the Pharaoh of Egypt and describing what would happen to him and his nation by the hand of Almighty God. This prophecy was delivered more than a year after the fall of Jerusalem, when any hope Judah might have had for help from Egypt was passed. At the time, Pharaoh and his kingdom were mighty forces in the world, second only to Babylon. Perhaps the conquered people of Judah wondered whether God would be faithful to punish Egypt and the other heathen nations as he had declared. Conversely, having witnessed the fall of Jerusalem and Judah, Egypt may have begun to gloat in pride over her own survival and supposed power. However, God had ordained that the proud nation would be humbled, and in today's text, their doom was pronounced by the words of God himself. The divine sentence upon Egypt reminds us that all nations and individuals who resist God will one day face his judgment. As we consider the one who placed the sun, moon, and stars in the firmament and presides over the nations of the world, let us be sure that we have made our peace with him and will not have to face his judgment some day. Background Information This chapter is a lament for Egypt given about a year and nine months after the prophecy that began in Ezekiel 31.1. A lamentation was an expression of anguish and extreme sorrow. At times, these were set to music, and sometimes they were chanted. Wailing, mourning, weeping, and moaning all would have been accompanying expressions of grief. How is this possible is a question the lament inferred. In this portion of text, verses 1 through 10 portray Pharaoh and Egypt as a monster being slain, 
and verses 11 through 16 reveal that the destruction will come by the sword of the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 2 infers that in God's eyes, Pharaoh was only a young lion, or whale, or crocodile, who mucked up the water and created problems. While Egypt was still a significant force with the ability to influence and trouble other nations, God revealed in verses 3 through 8 that he would disgrace the sea creature by capturing him in a net and dragging him to land, where he would become food for birds and beasts. According to verses 9 through 16, the nations around Egypt would fear when they observed Pharaoh's destruction. Seemingly, they would come to the realization that if God's judgment could come to mighty Egypt, they could experience it as well. As a result, they would take up a lament for Egypt. History proves that God's prophecy against Egypt was fulfilled. Nebuchadnezzar warred against Egypt, and a further destruction took place in 525 BC when the Persians, who had previously conquered Babylon, defeated Pharaoh in a decisive victory. The Greek historian Herodotus wrote of the defeat that the Egyptians were routed. The Pharaoh was taken captive, and the Persian leader made himself Pharaoh. This took place less than 65 years after Ezekiel's prophecy and brought an end to Egypt's 26th dynasty. Conclusion While man may attribute the rise and fall of a nation to its leaders, God alone controls the future. Let's be sure we have aligned ourselves with Him. Ezekiel Chapter 32 And it came to pass in the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas, and thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troubledst the waters with thy feet, and foulst their rivers. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Then will I leave thee upon the land, I will cast thee forth upon the open field, and will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain upon thee, and I will fill the beasts of the whole earth with thee. And I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains, and fill the valleys with thy height. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven, and make the stars thereof dark, I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. I will also vex the hearts of many people, when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations, into the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their king shall be horribly afraid for thee, when I shall brandish my sword before them and they shall tremble at every moment, every man for his own life, in the day of thy fall. For thus saith the Lord God, The sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall, the terrible of the nations, all of them, and they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt, and all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. I will destroy also all the beasts thereof from beside the great waters, neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more nor the hoofs of beasts trouble them. Then will I make their waters deep, and cause their rivers to run like oil, saith the Lord God. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country shall be destitute of that whereof it was full, when I shall smite all them that dwell therein, then shall they know that I am the Lord. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her, the daughters of the nations shall lament her, they shall lament for her, even for Egypt, and for all her multitude, saith the Lord God. It came to pass also in the twelfth year, in the fifteenth day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her, and the daughters of the famous nations, unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. Whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down, and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. 
they shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword, she is delivered to the sword, draw her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him, they are gone down, they lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Ashur is there and all her company, his graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. Whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. There is Elam and all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living, yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude, her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though their terror was caused in the land of the living, yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit, he is put in the midst of them that be slain. There is Meshech, Tubal, and all her multitude, her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they cause their terror in the land of the living. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war, and they have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquities shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised, and shalt lie with them that are slain with the sword. There is Edom, her kings, and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them that were slain by the sword, they shall lie with the uncircumcised, and with them that go down to the pit. There be the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians, which are gone down with the slain, with their terror they are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them, and shall be comforted over all his multitude, even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God.